Gene, you want to talk to that about how just uh, clutch uh, these drivers have been uh, for uh, Stuart Haas? Well, I think it goes back to the, the DNA of Stuart Haas Racing. Uh, uh, you know, basically, it's not like a, a micromanaged company. Uh, you know, obviously, Tony's a, a, you know been a professional racer all his life, and I think he brings a, that <clears throat> kind of attitude towards how we deal with with the employees. There, we don't really treat employees as employees. They're you know they're kind of part of a group, and and uh, we respect everybody's opinions, and uh, we kind of uh, allow a lot of freedom what people decide. I, I I know different organizations have different management strategies, and, and if anything, our strategy is more of letting people that know what they're doing do their job, and I think that really works well. I, I think that uh, you know even with uh, Kevin Rodney, it's like okay, you know they they kind of have their <coughs> uh, <coughs> flavor of how they race their cars, and each team is allowed to you know pursue that. That individuality, and um, um, you know, there's there's no there's no one kind of overseeing you that says this is exactly how you do it. We give we give people a lot of freedom, and uh, you know, the people that succeed, we uh, uh, reward well, and and uh, we understand that you know, racing is not about uh, you know having a, a, a plan in place. It's it's about figuring out how to beat your competitors, and the competition is so incredibly uh, tough out here that. Uh, you, know, you have to be flexible, and I think if anything between you know Tony and myself, we're, we're pretty much hands off. We we let people you know do their thing and know what they're good at, and and you know when things aren't going right, we we make changes. And uh, um, you know I, I don't think Tony and I really talk too much about about a lot of the changes that go on, and and you know Tony has a, a natural instinct to, of how the racing goes, and I respect that. And and uh, you know I my part is is is, is you know more of of infrastructure and, and Tony's more of the racer and, and you know that works well really really quite well um, and we have a lot of friends in the garage we have uh, we depend on a lot of uh, you know you know different uh, disciplines uh, Hendrix Motorsports uh, helps us a lot and uh, you know we're not we're not here trying to to you know develop our own technology what we try to do is we try to find things that work and, and people that work and and you know once they do work we, we kind of let them uh, you know uh, go forward with that uh, and I think great Zipidelli does a great job of, of managing people and and uh, I think and, you know race is kind of a creative sport you, if you if you uh, clamp down on, on, on people you don't get what you want so um, you know we, we kind of let people go in their own direction I'm really amazed at how well uh, uh, you know Kevin and Rodney have done and and um, uh, you know, we will keep tweaking things until we, we get, you know, other teams to do better. But uh, it's, it's more of, a, of, of kind of a, a, a recipe of, of the way we do things that's, that's different than every other race team. And, and you know, you, you win, win a championship once, maybe you call it a fluke, but if you do it the second time, I think we got something. I, I couldn't put my finger on it, but, um, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's something there that, that works. And, and, um, uh, <clears throat> Whatever it is, it, it, it you know, like I think you know, Rodney and Kevin have alluded to it. Just being brand new guys here, that it's an easy place to work. Uh, things get done. People people like working with each other, and uh, for the most part, I, I think we're a, a, a very productive uh, group at, Hot, at Stewart House Racing. Okay. Let's go over here to Jay. Then we'll go to Bob Pockers. Jay, go ahead. Jay Busby, Yahoo Sports. This is for Kevin and Tony. Kevin, was the advice that Jimmy Johnson was giving you was it more technical or more philosophical? And Tony, when you were in your uh, cup championship runs, did you have any of your rivals giving you advice along these lines? Well, for, I, I think you talk about rivals, but I, I think that I, I, Tony will have to speak for this, but I think that the way that these eight cars have worked together this year has been, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it's like nobody questions anything about we're sharing this or we're talking about that. or um, So that part has been pretty pretty awesome but you got to remember Jimmy and I have a you know we, we've known each other for a long time we slept on those same couches at, at Hornaday's houses Hornaday's house uh, adjacent to each other in the game room so um, he'd go race his ASA cars and and um, you know I'd go race the, the trucks for for the Spears bunch and so we spent we spent a lot of time together as, as friends and have, have grown to be better friends as, as we've gone past the last few years for sure um, but you know it, it's 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 been um, it's been fun I mean he's been very supportive and, and we've been very supportive of, of him as well as, as they went through some struggles and, and 
um, you know, trying to support them as, as much as we could to, to help them get back on track with the, with the 48 and, and the things that they've done this year. So it's just, um, it's been, it's been um, fun to, to be able to uh, see how all that works. And, and, um, but between, between these two guys, between him and, and Tony, it's been, a, it's, that's a lot to lean on and pretty fortunate. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the thing about racing, and it doesn't matter what level. I mean, everybody's a family, and, and you know, we, you work all season, and everybody starts at Daytona on a on a clean slate. But by the time you get to Homestead, I mean, it's it's down to, you know, it's been until this year, it's normally down to two or three guys, and uh, tonight four guys. But you know. You, you have your friends. I mean, and when you're around people 120 days a year, you, you become friends with most of them, and some better than others, obviously. But you know, we've got a great partnership with Hendrick Motorsports, and you know, like Kevin just mentioned, I mean, when when you've got eight drivers that are sharing information, and you know, it's it's a lot easier to to race seven guys than it is to try to worry about racing 34 or 35 guys. So um, you know, to to sit there and and work together like that, and when you get down to these scenarios, I mean, you're happy for the guys that are in this position, and uh, you know you're, you're going to give those guys advice, and you know they they may not be a part of your program, and if you know if you don't have a dog in the fight, you're still going to help somebody out, and you're still going to offer your advice and your experience to them, and uh, you know because it is it's it is a very different deal when you get to this week and uh, get in this position, and you know it's. It doesn't sound like it, and for face value, it doesn't look different. But I can promise you, from experience, and Kevin knows from experience now, it, you, you get to this the seven days and having your friends and having that advice and and uh, you know people that you know are your your equals, uh, you know having that advice from them. I mean, it's sometimes that's just the calm voice or word that you need to to get through the day. Let's go to Bob Pockris and then Marty Smith. Go ahead. Uh, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. Uh, Kevin. What, how did you feel when you left here three of the last four years in third? And did any of those feelings when you've been in Homestead in past years kind of spark your decision to go to Stuart Haas? Yeah, you know, I think in the in the past format and the past situations, I didn't feel like, you know, coming here, you obviously were in the race. But, you know, I, I don't think that you really felt like you had a chance just because you were behind in the points and, and everything that, that came with that. So. You know, I think as you as you look at the decision to to come here, I just you know you look at the I, I keep going back to the the people and the and the resources that you have available to you and, and Tony <clears throat> Tony was um, you know pretty adamant that you know we could we could race for wins and championships and and um, you know I think for for me that was really what it was all about. I just needed to. Whether I finished third or fourth or whatever the case was, I just wasn't excited about going to work. I needed to be excited about going to work, and, and um, this just gave me an opportunity to, to race with, with one of my good friends. And I'd known Kurt and, and Danica and, and uh, be a part of building something. And that just, I mean, that changed, it really changed my life in a, in a new direction. And really, my son started that just in evaluation of, you know, Delane and I looking at things and saying, what's going to make us happy? Because in the end, if you're not happy, um, you know, nothing's going to work like it should. So I don't think I've ever been happier in my, my whole life than I have been this year, just for the fact, from a personal standpoint, from a professional standpoint, and, and you see all the things that you have around you, and you're just, you're lucky. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty lucky to, to be able to do what I used to pay to do for a hobby. And, you know, you show up and you're having fun doing it, and it's like a hobby, honestly. I have no idea how much money I make or what I do. I love showing up to work. I love coming to the racetrack and, and love what I do. And that's been a long, long time since I can sit up here and honestly tell you that I, that I love the experience of, of everything that's, that's um, been around me. And it just makes it fun. Let's go to the gentleman here on the left, then we'll get to Marty. Go ahead, Marty. Kevin, uh, gentlemen here, Marty, and then Mike. Kevin, Andy Kent with the New York Times. Uh, can you take us through that final restart and what you're you're thinking when you're you see Ryan? You're gonna be mad because I have no idea how I got the lead. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. 
What were you, th what, what, my, maybe what you were thinking, you see Ryan Newman, Newman next to you. And yeah, you know, I, I, I know uh, we started sixth, and I, I thought that we were in a good position uh, to be able to, to capitalize on the, on the new tires. And anything past that, I can tell you about the last couple laps. Um, but how we got the lead, I don't even, I don't even remember. Um, so it was just um, one of those moments where, you know, the restart before that, I think we started 12th and, and the seas kind of parted down the back stretch off of turn two. I kind of gave it a little too much throttle through the middle of one and two and got myself tight. And, and then the seas parted down the back stretch and we were able to get three or four cars or six, I guess, or five as it, as it all turns out. So um, just, you know, you got very short time to do it. You feel like you... I felt like we had an advantage, obviously, from, from a tire standpoint, and then that was our strong point all night were the restarts. So I felt like, um, you know, we just needed to go for it, and it all worked out. Let's go to Marty and then Mike Massaro. We actually going to flip. Mike Massaro, we're, then Marty. We're going to flip-flop. Way to go. <laughs> uh, and kind of following right up on that question. Um, w there was a lot of talk going into this race that uh, to win the championship, you probably would have to win the race. Lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. What was it like there in those closing laps, knowing you had no choice? You had to win that race. Well, I think as you – honestly, I didn't think that that was going to be the case coming into the week just for the fact that you had so many good cars that were just kind of going for broke. And in the end, it turned out you had to go for broke just to be competitive. And I think that's really what this format has turned this, um, you know, every week into over the last 10 weeks is if you want to win, you, you've got to – you know, if you want to win the championship, you're going to have to figure out how to win races. And in the end, that's what it came down to was, was winning the race. And uh, obviously a, a gutsy call and, and four tires on the pit box. So, so yeah, in the end, you had to win the race to, to win the championship, and it, it all worked out. Let's go to Marty Smith, and then we'll go to Mike Vega. Marty Smith, ESPN. This is first for Tony and then for Kevin. Tony, what's it like? for you to end probably the hardest year of your life like this and be able to celebrate like this. And, Kevin, you had his back so staunchly throughout the summer. What's it like to be able to give him this in a year this tough? I'm, uh, I'm, just, I'm just glad the night turned out. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the rest of its history, we've talked about it over and over, and it's uh, – Honestly, I'm tired of talking about it, to be honest, at this point. I'm, I'm more excited about what this organization and what this group of people has done together. And, uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of things I would love to change about the last 18 months of my life, but tonight's not one of them. So uh, I'm going to enjoy this moment, and I'm going to enjoy it with this group and this young man. And, uh, you know, we're going to go celebrate and enjoy this because uh, this, this group of EPEL here have deserved it. And... Uh, you know, it's this is this is a great family, and this is a great group of people to lean on. Well, I think for for me personally, there's nothing better than to see your friend smile, and that's really what it's that's what it's all about. Um, you know, I know he's been through a lot this year, but um, very rarely have we have we talked about those situations. It's just, you know, he's my friend, and I want to see him I want to see him happy and 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 work through the situations that he has. And you know, we're fortunate to be able to to work together. Um, and, and have those, um, you know, situations to where we race cars and, and do the things that we, that we love to do. But in the end, I just want to see him happy. I'm going to take three more questions. Uh, we'll go to Mike, Matt, and end with Brant. Go ahead. Tony and, and Kevin, congratulations. And just wanted to ask if there was any sense of appreciation for the irony at the end of that race when Ryan Newman was a guy who was pressing the issue and trying to beat you guys to win the championship himself, you know, after leaving the team and going to Childress where, Kevin, you had worked for so long and wanted to win a championship there. Did you, did you get an appreciation in, in the aftermath of how hard this thing was to win? I was, you know, I'm, I'm happy for, for Richard and, and Ryan. I mean, you always, um, you know, everybody has their situations to where, you know, things happen and, and you have to move forward in life and, and to see RCR uh, be successful and, and, and have the things that, that they had happen this year was, was good, good for them. And um, I'm happy they finished second. 
Yeah, I think it's just a good example that, you know, change isn't always a bad thing. Um, you know, and, and especially in this sport, I mean, it's such a performance-based industry. Um, and there's, you know, there's crew guys moving all the time. There's drivers making changes, uh, crew chiefs making changes. It, but it's, it boils down to people, and it boils down to putting the right packages together. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's gratifying for me. I mean, I, I had two of my really good friends were in first and second of the points this year. Uh, how they got there and who they got there with doesn't matter. The fact that they just got there, um, you know, and, and I'm happy for Ryan and, and I'm and I'm happy for Kevin, you know, because of that. So, uh, you know, it's it's just proof that, you know, you you make just a simple change like that, and uh, you know, it's it's more than simple. It's a lot. It's very complex, but there's there's reasons that it happens, and uh, you know, I think tonight's proof of why you make those changes. Go ahead, Matt. There's a mic right behind you, Matt. <laughs> so this is for uh, Tony, Kevin, and um, Gene. Earlier in the season, people kind of called you out for being kind of crazy for assembling this group, a lot of contentious personalities. So given that you immediately respond with the championship and all the wins and all the things that you guys this year, is there a certain satisfaction that comes along with that? You think we're crazy now? <laughs> <laughs> crazy works. <laughs> Don't underestimate why we think the way we think is the moral to the story. Um, you guys are pretty smart, but we're smarter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think one of the things is is um, I don't think anybody. I think Rodney proved it tonight. I think with the changes that that we've made, I think you have to be in order to be successful in life. You have to be willing to take make bold decisions. Those, those guys down there, they're not scared to make bold decisions. And, and sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. But in the end, you have to, somebody has to make a decision. And when you have guys that are not scared to, to step up and say, this is what we're going to do, and, and sometimes you get to you know, have the moments where you shine, and sometimes you have to eat a little crow. But that's part of life. We'll go to Brant James, and we'll finish with Jim Utter. Go ahead, Brant. Brand James, ESPN.com. My question was sort of uh, in that line for Tony. How does the satisfaction of winning as a driver compared to a situation like this where you made a lot of decisions and, and people you rely on made decisions that culminate in this? Well, I, I think inherently when you take on a task of being an owner in this series, you, you're going to have to make a lot of decisions and you're going to have to make a lot of tough decisions along the way. And, uh, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it, and and you'd have owners lined up from here to Georgia Line, you know, want to do this. But it, it it's hard, it's tough, um, you know, and, and that's but that's what makes nights like tonight gratifying because it is hard, it is difficult, um, but it's having the confidence in the people that you work around of, of why you do that and why we do what we do. So uh, yeah. It, 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 you know, this is a, a, an industry where, you know, it's it's not like any other pro sport where you're going to have two teams and one's going to win and one's going to lose. It's not 50-50 odds when you go into each night. Um, and especially when you start a season like this and, you know, going through an elimination process in the chase to get down to here. I mean, it's, it's difficult. So, uh, you know, that's what's fun about doing it with a guy like Gene and, and having teammates like Kevin and Kurt and Danica and four great crew chiefs. I mean, that's that's what makes all this worthwhile. And, you know, kind of going back to the last question, you you, you got to be a little bit crazy to want to do this. I mean, it's the odds say you're going to you're going to be unsuccessful more than you're going to be successful. But it's it's those it's these single moments like this that make all that hard work worthwhile. And that's why we do it. Final question from Jim Utter. Jim Utter, Shaw Observer. For Kevin, uh, you mentioned earlier about wanting to go to work happy, and if it, you weren't having fun, what kind of what's the point? Um, a lot. You and Rodney put a lot into building this team, which was obviously fast all season. But how much do you credit that feeling towards the outcome this season of, of being well, happy and what you, know, you were I doing? Well, I think that I think the best thing about you know that I've experienced this year about Rodney and myself is is um, we're kind of a little bit opposite. I'm pretty high strung. He's pretty low key. 
so it's been a it's been a really good balance of of, of people. Um, he's put people around him that that believe in in what he does, and and um, in turn, ev it's become everybody believes in what we do. And when you can when you can keep in certain we, you can do a lot more things. And I think that's that's the the biggest thing that I've learned uh, throughout the years in, in owning the race teams. You can you can buy all the fancy stuff and you can do all the all the great things, and, but if you don't have the right people, you're dead in the water. So, you know, he's come in and and um, been committed to the program, and his wife has has been a supporter. My wife's been a supporter, and all the guys on this team's wives have have been a supporter for the time that it has taken to to build this team and the dedication to to things uh, you know that that it takes to to be successful. So, it's been. Um, it's been a lot of fun. He's become one of my, you know, my really good friends, and and um, you know, there's not a day that goes by that it's not a text or a phone call or uh, email or something that that doesn't go by that that we talk. I mean, we just we talk about if there's anything going on, he'll he'll give me a heads up, and I'm sure that I've I've told him from the beginning that there's some things I just don't need to know. So I'm sure there's a few things I don't need to know, but in the end, um, you know, I feel like we we're pretty pretty straight up and, and honest with each other and that that's uh that's that makes it a lot of fun and i think that it, that bleeds over into the into the team and the guys and, and they see the relationship that that we have and and nobody ever really ever has pointed a finger and and, and been mad at each other it's just we may get frustrated and um you know you just walk away and, and next thing you know that you're, you're working on a solution so it's been it's been an unbelievable uh First year, and um, pretty awesome. What do you think? Hmm? Can you say, we win? Say it. Say it, we win. Say it loud. Or you got to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Guess you're going to bed. Say, we win. <laughs> I, th I think I heard him. I think he said it. Congratulations to Gene Haas. Tony Stewart, Rodney Childers, Kevin Harvick, and the number four Budweiser Chevrolet and everybody over at Stewart Haas Racing. This was indeed a uh, special championship season, and uh, you guys earned it. Congratulations. Thank, you. Thank all of you guys, too. You guys work your butts off each and every day, so appreciate what you do. Okay, let's go.